everybody. Welcome to another edition of Wiseman's Weekend Wellness Tips. This weekend we're going to talk to you about herbal medicine. Specifically three herbs that are great spring herbs that are growing right now um, that can help with a lot of different things. And these are herbs that really you can find anywhere out there, maybe in a just growing wild or in a nursery or you know maybe not necessarily growing um, but usually in most natural health food stores too you can find these but before we get into that I want to just talk a little bit about herbal medicine more generally now at Wiseman Natural Health we specialize in treating chronic pain and autoimmune conditions and especially when it comes to these kind of chronic things or really complicated internal disorders such as autoimmune conditions um, herbal medicine is an extremely effective tool, extremely effective. And this isn't new medicine. I think a lot of people think this is all new age and you hear a lot of people that's like, oh, there's not much scientific study or they don't really know much about this. Honestly, none of that's true. Herbal medicine has been medicine for almost all of human existence. It's really only within the last, you know, not even a hundred years that pharmaceuticals have been around as medicine like we know it today. Before that time period, if you wanted to get cured of anything, if you had sicknesses, it was pretty much herbal medicine that you had used. That was it with that. So, you know, needless to say, there's a lot of history <laughs> involved with using these medicines. And now today, there is a lot of scientific research as well. The big thing is just having the proper knowledge, having the proper training in order to use these safely and effectively. And that is key. You know, it, it, for whatever condition that you are wanting to treat, you know, making sure you talk to someone who's knowledgeable in this, who's trained in this, who's a trained herbalist is key with this. Not only just to being safe with it, but also to receiving an effective treatment as well. Because there's a lot of different herbs and plants out there that we can use in a lot of different ways. Um, and unless someone really knows what they're doing, then you're often not going to get the results that you want. So that's kind of the first thing with that. Secondly, if you're going to go collect herbs out in the wild, make sure you know, you know, where you're collecting them from. You know, you don't want to be collecting them from anywhere that's, you know, polluted, that has pesticides or any chemicals sprayed on it, um, any property that's not yours that someone might get upset, you know, that you're tr picking this stuff or, you know, stuff that is illegal, literally, it's, you know, to pick this stuff. So know where you're collecting this stuff from. And then from there, know what you're actually looking for, too. You know, if you're not sure, you know, it's the right plant or the right herb you're harvesting, then don't do it. You know, when in doubt, don't. That's kind of the key with this. So those are the general things to remi remember with herbal medicines. But with that said, you know, the herbs I'm going to share you t with you today are pretty safe herbs for the most part. They're not going to cause people problems, really. And in fact, these have been used as just food, you know, in smaller amounts for a long time. I mean, a long time. I'm talking thousands and thousands and thousands, if not millions of years, really. That's how long these herbs have been used. So they're pretty safe for the most part. Um, so the three herbs that really are great spring herbs right now that are simple that most people can find are number one, dandelion, number two, nettles, and number three, violets. Now you may not always think of some of these as herbs and sometimes you may think of them as weeds or pests or violets just as pretty flowers, but these are all herbs that we use that are commonly growing wild or we grow in our garden out there with that. Now, if you want more specific, specific information on these, I'm going to be doing some videos um, out in the wild, really showing you these plants and talking more specifically about these plants later. But for now, here's just kind of a good general overview on these three great spring herbs. Number one, dandelion is a great herb right now that's growing. Um, and it's really good to pick the fresh leaves and you can make those into a salad or just put those in, you know, mixed in with your salad. Now, it's better to pick the leaves when they're first growing because if you wait too long, they get too bitter. And really when we're talking about herbal medicine and the herbal part, we tend to use the root most often. And the root's best to harvest early in the spring before it starts growing the flowers or late in the year when after, you know, it's already gone to seed and that puffball is puffed out. So the root itself is something we harvest and you can make into a tea um, most commonly. And it's really good for your liver, your gallbladder, and your urinary tract system. You know, it's a little bit bitter, even the greens are bitter, so this is going to help with fat digestion, cholesterol digestion, and overall good for kind of clearing inflammation out from those areas. So dandelion is a great herb right now, and I think most people know what dandelion looks like, so that's an easy one to recognize. Number two, nettles. You might not always know what nettles look like, you might not have encountered it, but if you have um, physically encountered it, believe me, you will remember, because the little stinging, you know, thing on it, yeah. 
that's not comfortable when you touch it. You know, it's a little burny, itchy, tingly type sensation. But, you know, the reality is nettles is an herb that's been used by humans for as long as humans have been around, literally. You know, when they're doing archaeological excavations, they find evidence of nettles alongside Neanderthals and really, really, really old archaeological sites. It's a very old herb. And when you cook nettles or when you dry the nettles out and they encounter heat, it actually neutralizes the stinging toxin in those spines. So you don't have to worry about it. The only time you have to worry about it is when you're actually trying to harvest it. And again, this time of year nettles is just growing. It's great to harvest the new young leaves just like the dandelion. And again, you can make those into food really. Um, so soup is a common one that they make nettle soup out of with that. But you could also treat it like, um, you know, spinach and put it in a smoothie or something, you know, that's pretty popular right now is putting all kinds of greens and smoothies and these kind of things. Um, but you can use the greens essentially like a spinach and just make sure you're steaming them or sauteing them. If you can make a pesto out of them, there's a lot of things you can do, but just as soon as you cook it, it'll neutralize that toxin. Otherwise, nettles are great um, just mineral content. I got a lot of calcium, magnesium in them, and they're also great for your kidney system. Kidney is any kidney infection, urinary problems, nettles are great for. And you can make them into a tea for that purpose. So nettles is another good one. The last one is violets. These purple little flowers that are really pretty. Honestly, these are great also for just putting on a salad. You know, these are edible flowers that you can eat. But in larger amounts, we tend to actually use them to clear inflammation and heat, mainly from the skin um, and from the lungs and the throat in those areas. Um, we also use it to clear heat, we say, inflammation from the eyes too. So again, you know, this is the way herbs work a lot. You know, violets are growing right now and they're good for a lot of springtime allergy type stuff. You know, itchy, watery eyes, you know, maybe you have postnasal drips or throat, maybe you're getting hives on your skin from encountering things. Violets are good for this. And again, you can make a tea out of them for that purpose. So if you want to learn more, stay tuned um, later this week, later these next couple weeks, I'll be filming more specific information about these herbs. Otherwise, you know, look out for these, enjoy them. Hope this helps you. Happy spring.